<laughs> Please be seated. Members of the Board of Governors and the administration, faculty, staff, honored guests, parents, grandparents, siblings, friends, children, alumni, and especially, especially members of the Wayne Law class of 2023, Good evening and welcome to Wayne State University Law School's commencement. I'm Richard Bierschbach, I'm the Dean of the Law School. We're here tonight to celebrate our soon to be graduates as they prepare to become members of the legal community, follow in the footsteps of so many of our distinguished alumni and serve the public, ad public as advocates for justice. We're also celebrating students who have completed our Master of Laws degree and our Master of Studies in Law degree. Soon you will hear from our keynote speaker, Michigan Attorney General and Wayne Law alumna, Dana Nessel. But first, let me say a few words about this incredible group of students here. We all know how hard they have worked over the past several years, culminating in this moment, where we come together to recognize their significant achievements and welcome them to the next chapter of their careers. These students already have logged long hours serving the community, applying what they learned in the classroom to assist real world clients while gaining valuable work experience, advocating for Detroit residents on the brink of eviction, connecting people with cancer to critically important legal resources, helping asylum seekers facing some of the darkest and most difficult moments of their lives and so much more. And they've done it with professionalism, grace, and determination, befitting the lawyers they are about to come. Among tonight's graduates are students who collectively donated nearly 1,000 hours, 1,000 hours of pro bono service to those in need, helped to develop new and pathbreaking initiatives like our Warrior Housing Corps, which serves community members facing eviction and provides learning opportunities for fellow students and policy support work to community organizations. Led the way in creating the Wayne Defenders, an interdisciplinary group of law and social work students dedicated to strengthening the practice of holistic defense and to transforming our criminal justice system. Competed on moot court and mock trial teams including our renowned Jessup International team, which marks a decade of continued success this year and placed in the top tiers of national and international competitions. Through our Black Law Students Association, hosted our third Be the Change event, which has now helped more than 200 middle and high school students from Detroit to develop critical thinking skills and learn about career opportunities in law. And started new traditions, like a celebratory iftar dinner during Ramadan. A dinner that was open to students and alumni alike and brought together people from all walks of life. Our Master of Studies in Law students are the first class to graduate with this degree. Right. They joined the program early in the pandemic and what they learned helped them guide their companies and organizations through a difficult time. In fact, all of our graduates here today have preserved through and made the most out of classes during the peak of the pandemic. This JD class started virtually their entire 1L year on Zoom. During one of the most challenging times, maybe the most challenging time in the history of legal education, these graduates made it happen. And they did so while overcoming not just the pandemic, but all of life's challenges along the way. So please join me in congratulating our students on all of their achievements and thanking the members of our faculty, our dedicated alumni, and others who coached and mentored them throughout the years. Thank you all and congratulations. So this is just a slice 
a slice of our impressive student successes. In addition to these impressive student successes, and in fact, in large part because of the high caliber of graduates that Wayne Law produces, the law school also has seen great institutional success nationally. For the ninth consecutive year, Wayne Law has been recognized as the best value law school by the National Jurist and Pre-Law Magazine. We were again the only law school in Michigan to be recognized. That's great. And Wayne Law continues to maintain its high standing in US News and World Report despite recent changes to those rankings. This year, we moved up two more spots, bringing us to number 56 in the country. That's our highest rank ever, and a total jump of 44 spots in the last six years, making history for the school. We're especially proud that we continue to rank very high nationally in the value we provide to our students. Wayne Law is the number six public law school in the country and the number 14 law school out of all law schools in the country by ratio of its graduates' debt to their starting salary. That's an important measure of the affordability and worth of an excellent legal education. These historic achievements don't come on their own. We earn them together because of the talent of these graduates and our students, faculty, staff, alumni, and supporters across the spectrum. Amidst this progress, we also recognize and celebrate the critical role that our law school plays in the revitalization of Detroit. Many students graduating here tonight already have been using their legal education as a tool for service to the residents of this great city and beyond. Recognizing the pandemic's disparate impact on Detroit community members, our graduates have opened up their hearts, opened up their minds, and devoted their time to the needs of our community, and they've really set a standard for what impactful lawyering is all about, even before graduating. They also worked on important programs that are part of our law school's Damon J. Keith Center for Civil Rights and our Levin Center for Oversight and Democracy. And finally, I want to pause for a moment and recognize someone who should be here with us tonight, but isn't. Marcella Darris was a beloved member of this graduating class. She came to law school because she wanted to help improve the lives of others. Marcella passed away in September of 2021, and today we celebrate and honor Marcella as well. Graduates, as you contemplate your time in law school and look toward your very bright futures, please know that the entire Wayne Law family is proud of you, and we look forward to supporting you as you continue to grow and to lead. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Michael Basuito, Wayne State University School of Medicine class of 1981 of the Wayne State University Board of Governors to bring you greetings on behalf of the board. Please welcome Dr. Basuito. Kind of overwhelmed, they asked a surgeon to bring greetings to the law school. <laughs> when you get out and practice, just remember, be nice to surgeons. <laughs> so on behalf of the Board of Governors, it is my pleasure to welcome all of the graduates of the law school class of 2023 and send you our deepest and most heartfelt congratulations. We are so pleased to be together in person on this auspicious occasion and look forward to celebrating this day with you. These are times of uncertainty, the likes of which today's society has not yet seen in recent history. There are challenges with international disputes, the continuing impact of the pandemic, the in landmark decisions that will, will be made by the courts this year and in the public's trust of our institutions. This may seem daunting, but we have faced challenging times before and we will face them again. History has shown us that this too shall pass. But one thing that I hope will never pass is the knowledge you've gathered, the treasured friendships you've made, and the wisdom you've gained during your time as a student at Wayne State. 
You have worked hard to get to this moment, and you should be proud, as we are, of your accomplishments. Wayne State University is an outstanding institution, and today you join more than 300,000 alumni who call our university their alma mater. Our vibrant growing campus is a tribute to our students and of the unwavering faith that we have in your ability to succeed. I wanna, I wanna uh, repeat one statistic that I looked up this weekend that Dr. Biersbach gave you, and I just wanna reinforce it. Over the past six years, we've jumped 44 spots in the US News and World Report rankings of the best law schools in the country. And I think this is a testimony to Dr. Biersbach as our dean since he's been here, to our faculty and to our staff, and I think they deserve another hand just for that statistic alone. Again, from the Board of Governors and the entire Wayne State University community, congratulations and best wishes to all of you. Thank you. It's now with great pleasure that I introduce Wayne State University Provost Mark Kornblu to also say a few words tonight. Provost Kornblu. Good evening, and a special welcome to the Wayne State University Law School Class of 2023. I'd like to also welcome your family, friends, faculty and staff of the law school and our distinguished guests. Today, our students join a distinguished class of citizens. Both the rule of law and those who counsel citizens about law are indispensable to our society. Both deserve our deepest respect. The rule of law is essential to all of our freedoms. This is as true today in our deeply divided country as it has ever been. Our constitution was ratified more than 230 years ago, and the law continues to adapt to the needs of justice. It is alive today as it was in the 18th century. Indeed, it needs to be more alive today than ever. And each of you has a continually re responsibility to breathe life into the law. Part of this has to do with others. Whether you're earning the Juris Doctorate, the Master of Laws, or the Masters of Studies in Laws, your calling is much deeper than just the letter of the law. Your ultimate duty is to serve as champions and defenders of freedom. As John Locke wrote, where there is no law, there is no freedom. Whatever direction your career takes you, I trust you'll dedicate yourself to justice and the protection of freedom. They help form the fabric of our democratic ideals, and they, and they are the opportunities to make law work for the good of all in the United States. May you always feel the power and privilege of having been called to serve both your profession and your fellow citizens. Congratulations and best wishes to you all. The names of university officials and faculty are printed in your program. I'd like to ask the members of the president's cabinet to please rise. So please join me in thanking these university officials for their support of our law school. Thank you. Thank you. Many members of the law faculty, administration, and alumni community also are with us tonight. I'd like to ask the members of the law school faculty to rise and to remain standing. If we have any part-time faculty here, I'd like to ask them to rise, please, and remain faculty, uh, remain standing and remain faculty, whether they're here with us or um, in the audience. Any members of the law school administration and staff who are with us, please rise. Any Wayne Law alumni who are with us, Again, in the audience as well. Please go ahead and rise. I, thank you. Thank you. I now want to invite our students to thank all of these people, all the members of the Wayne Law community who've played an important role 
and their education and life at the law school. Thank you all. Please be seated, thanks. So the president of the Student Board of Governors has significant responsibility, both as leader and chief liaison between our students and the law school administration. Our outgoing SPG president, along with her fellow SPG members, has played an important role in building community at the law school. They worked hard throughout their tenure to be a voice for the students. And I personally have greatly enjoyed collaborating with them and deeply value all of their efforts and everything they've done this year. Based on what I've seen, I'm confident that their leadership in the legal community and beyond is only beginning. So I'm especially happy to introduce the president of the Student Board of Governors for the 2022 to 2023 academic year, Christina Atanasowska, who will recognize the professors of the year. Christina. Good evening, deans, professors, faculty members, families, friends, and fellow graduates. I think I speak for everyone in this opera house, from students to parents, that we are all overwhelmed with excitement sitting here today. Finally, all of our hard work the past three years has led us to this day, the day that we finally graduate with our Juris Doctorate. But it is also officially the day that a majority of us are sitting in our seats thinking about how we are only two days away, or some of you might start today, from starting our bar prep for seven to eight hours every day until July. I know a majority of us had to adjust to a new way of learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It was anxiety-filled and difficult to adjust for many. Our first year of law school moved to Zoom, and we had to adapt to an entirely virtual learning environment that we were not prepared for. Our class in particular missed out on all of the social events and networking events that first year law students attend and face-to-face -face interactions with one another. We were also one of the first classes to navigate remote legal internships in the summer, something that was unheard of prior to COVID-19. Although we never got to personally know each other as a class like the previous graduating classes, the strength of our passion for law despite being in a pandemic, is what guided us together for the past three years. We have different types of law school stories than most people that have gone through law school. We had to find new ways to connect with our peers on Zoom and breakout rooms. Uh, our cats and dogs roamed our Zoom screens during our cold calls and our property and civil procedure classes. Many of our family members accidentally walked into our virtual Zoom classes and ran out and many took 10 minute Zoom breaks as an opportunity to make lunch and make some pizza rolls before class started again during our 10 minute breaks. We are a different type of law school class, one that no one will ever forget. We are the COVID class. We also made difficult sacrifices when we decided to apply to law school and throughout our law school journey. When applying to law school, some of us, particularly first-generation students, went against the odds and were told that we would never get into law school because our LSAT scores were not as high as others, or that we did not have the right legal experience to get into law schools. Others did not get into law school on their first try, and many had to adapt moving to Michigan for the first time. When we started law school, we missed family events and social gatherings with our friends to prepare for finals. We spent hours at the library or quiet spaces around campus studying. Some of us even had to get new eye prescriptions from reading so many case books from start to finish. But along the way, we knew that these sacrifices would be worth it in the end. And we are finally at the end. So according to the American Bar Association, something we've heard a lot, throughout the past three years, less than 1% of the population in the United States is a practicing attorney. And now we're one step closer to becoming a part of that one percentile. I wanted to take the opportunity today to thank, to thank our families, significant others, and faculty members that helped us along our journey. 
to our families and significant others, you dealt with us when we were trying to adapt to a new way of thinking. You helped us through the stress of our anxiety when we were preparing for our first cold calls and throughout our entire finals week when we would recite holdings of cases in the black letter law. To the faculty members in the Wayne Law Administration, you were able to help us navigate a new way of virtual learning and make change at our law school. Our graduating class is now able to say that we attended a law school that is ranked number 56 in the country, a 44 spot raise from when we were first thinking of applying to Wayne Law. Our journey and experiences have equipped us with new legal skills and we have demonstrated our resilience and courage at a time when the world was trying to overcome the effects of a worldwide pandemic. As we begin our new careers, remember that each and every one of us will be encountering each other again, whether it be at the grocery store, as opposing counsel, in a courtroom, or a coworker at a law firm. So let us stay connected and celebrate our accomplishments today and embrace the opportunities that lay ahead. Congratulations to the class of 2023. I now have the honor of presenting three incredible professors the award of Professor of the Year. I have personally had the chance to get to know all three of these professors, from my first year contracts class to working together on committee groups. These three professors have changed the law school experience for many students. So this year we had a tie for 1L Professor of the Year, so I am pleased to announce two awardees for this honor. And just so you all know, ties are typically unusual for Professors of the Year, so this is definitely an exciting moment. The award of 1L Professor of the Year goes to someone who I have had the pleasure of getting to know in several faculty committee meetings last year. But because I did not personally have this professor in a classroom setting, I spoke to a classmate who did, and I would like to share their comments. This professor has a unique ability to impart information in a way that is understandable, interesting, and memorable. During the terrifying experience of 1L, this professor never hid the ball from her students. She always transcended the traditional doctrines and exposed her students to new perspectives within the legal field. The first 1L Professor of the Year goes to Kristen Matoy Carlson. The second award for 1L Professor of the Year goes to someone who I have had the pleasure of getting to know my first year of law school, specifically my second semester of contracts class. This professor consistently goes out of his way to teach his students the transactional approach to contracts within the first year. I have personally seen this professor go out of his way to help his first year students find the right path for their legal careers going forward. The second 1L Professor of the Year award goes to Professor Eric A. Zaks. Okay, now on to the award for Upper Class Professor of the Year. When I talk to my classmates, they speak of how much he truly cares about each student and their successes. On every occasion that I have encountered this professor, he goes out of his way to be interested in every student's law school path and experience. The Upper Class Professor of the Year Award goes to Professor Daniel Elman. Thank you, Christina, and congratulations again to Professors Carlson, Zachs, and Elman. We're lucky to have the three of you at the law school. Now to deliver our keynote address, I'm thrilled to introduce a Wayne Law alumna who continues to make history and continues to make us proud. A, formal, a former criminal prosecutor and civil rights attorney, Dana Nessel was sworn in as Michigan's 54th Attorney General 
in January 2019. Since that time, her core initiatives have been aimed at ensuring that the Department of the Attorney General fully and directly serves the people of Michigan. Attorney General Nessel's consumer protection divisions have taken a lead role in fighting against companies that try to take advantage of Michigan consumers, whether through unfair utility rate increases or unscrupulous business practices. Ms. Nessel has been a champion of the state's most important resources, its Great Lakes. Her, environment, her environmental protection division is actively fighting to ensure clean air, water, and energy for Michigan's residents so that our most valuable assets are preserved for future generations. She's also joined the battle to combat, combat the largest public health crisis in the nation, prescription drug addiction, and to stem the tide of Michigan's biggest environmental crisis in decades, man-made chemical contamination. As the state's chief law enforcement officer, the Attorney General launched Michigan's Elder Abuse Task Force in partnership with the Michigan Supreme Court to stop the rise of crimes against one of the state's most vulnerable populations. She's continued the department's criminal investigations into the Flint water crisis and sexual abuse in the Catholic Church. And within the prosecutorial branch, she's created a conviction integrity unit to investigate claims of innocence and ensure public trust in our criminal justice system. We're deeply proud of her many successes and of how she represents our law school and our university. Please join me in welcoming Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel. Thank you, Dean Bursbeck. Um, like it, is, uh, it is really an honor to be here today, uh, my alma mater, Wayne State University Law School, and to be part of what, for many of you here today, is, is the first day for the rest of your lives, moving on to bigger, better things after years of working towards your Juris Doctor, or uh, according to my Jewish mother, the worst kind of doctor. Um, you know, over the years, I've, I've often thought of the commencement ceremony from when I graduated law school some 827 years ago or so. Uh, you know, many commencement speeches are uplifting, motivational, but largely generic and generally unmemorable. Not so for the Wayne State University Law School class of 1994. I never forgot the speaker or the speech. She was Michigan Supreme Court Justice Patricia Boyle, may she rest in peace, an extremely accomplished jurist who regaled us with story after story about lawyers she had graduated with who either killed themselves or quit practicing law altogether. They so despised the profession. I wasn't quite sure what point she was trying to make, but I remember when I left thinking that I had made a terrible, terrible decision and seriously question whether I should reconsider consider studying for the bar exam at all. But ultimately I did. I passed and have spent the intervening 29 years as a practicing attorney. I also decided that if I was ever asked to be a commencement speaker, I would try to be slightly more encouraging, but also try to provide solid advice to pass on to the generations who came behind me. So, here goes. Number one, oftentimes your biggest failures will become your most significant triumphs. For 11 years, I served as an assistant prosecutor for Wayne County, working as hard as I could to do the best I possibly could in my position. I was assigned to all the most important specialty units, homicide, child abuse, sexual assaults, police shootings, public corruption, Yet, year after year, I was continually and painfully passed up for a promotion and the raise that I badly needed as a young single mom. Finally, I met with my boss, uh, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy, a brilliant yet freakishly intimidating woman, and I told her if I could not secure a promotion, I would have to leave public service and the job I loved so much 
to try to make a better future for my family in the private sector. She kindly suggested I not allow the door to hit me any place too uncomfortable. So I resigned. It was terrifying for me to leave my government job with good benefits and a regular paycheck every two weeks to become my own boss and create my own practice. But I did, eventually taking on some very significant cases. Nine years after leaving the prosecutor's office, the morning the United States Supreme Court struck down the ban on same-sex marriage nationwide uh, in a case called Obergefell v. Hodges, you probably learned about, also known as DeBoer v. Snyder here in Michigan, a case that I filed and tried in federal court. My old boss, Kim Worthy, texted me right after the decision came down. The text read, never promoting you was the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> to which I replied, too soon, Kim, too soon. <laughs> Still hurts. But it turned out to be the best thing for me. Had I received that promotion, I would have stayed in my comfort zone at the prosecutor's office the rest of my career. I never would have won some of my most significant cases, and I never would have run for attorney general. So don't allow yourself to be traumatized by your failures. Use them instead to inspire you and drive you towards something better. Number two, take on the tough cases, even when you think you might lose. You can't win a case you never file. If you know it's the right position to take and you can argue the position honestly, morally, and ethically, you only ever lose by never mounting a legal challenge at all. In 2008, a woman named Renee Harmon contacted me. She and her same-sex partner had used alternative reproductive technology to have three children, then a 10-year-old girl, and seven-year-old twin boys they raised together. Under the Michigan Adoption Code and Michigan Custody Act, Michigan was one of only a handful of states that allowed for only one parent in a same-sex couple to have any rights at all to their children, which in Renee's case was her partner, Tammy Davis, the biological mother. Tammy had broken up with Renee, took the children and filed a PPO against her. No one would take her case because there was no Michigan law that supported it. But I felt Renee deserved to have someone help her fight for her children. So I thought, why the hell not me? I, uh, I argued a legal theory that had been used successfully in similar cases in other states called the Equitable Parent Doctrine. And wouldn't you know it, I actually was successful in circuit court. That decision was unfortunately short-lived and ultimately overturned in the Court of Appeals and then that decision was affirmed in the Michigan Supreme Court, and Renee never saw her children again, which was awful and a travesty of justice. But later, when we argued the marriage equality case in federal court, the judge used Renee's case, known as Harmon v. Davis, to strike down the ban on same-sex marriage, finding that Michigan's laws, which had deprived Renee Harmon of her children, violated both the equal protection and due process clauses of the United States Constitution based on, in part, her case. Had I not lost the Harmon case in state court, I might never have won the DeBoer case in federal court. And you never really lose when you use your P number to do the right thing. Sometimes justice emerges in the most curious of ways, eventually. Number three. Revenge is a case best served cold. After leaving the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, my foray into private practice had been largely successful until the housing market crash of 2008-2009 when the economy tanked and no one, and I mean no one, could afford to hire a lawyer. By 2010, I had to choose between paying my mortgage and my health insurance and decided it was best to re-enter the world of government service for the benefits and for a more steady paycheck. As luck would have it, there was an opening at the Michigan Department of Attorney General. So I contacted an old friend who was then a bureau chief for my predecessor, former Michigan Attorney General Bill Schutte, 
But I was told not to even bother applying because AG Schutte was well known to be vehemently opposed to LGBTQ rights and was unlikely to hire an openly gay woman into the office, irrespective of my qualifications to serve as an assistant attorney general. In fact, because sexual orientation and gender identity were not protected under the Michigan Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act, the only way I could actually get a job at the Department of Attorney General was to run for, win election, and become the Attorney General. So I did. And then, last year, as Attorney General, I personally argued a case called Roush World v. Michigan Department of Civil Rights before the Michigan Supreme Court, where the court ruled, at long last, that LGBTQ protections were encapsulated in the state law, and no one could be refused employment simply for being gay in Michigan. And now, next to the American and Michigan flags, a pride flag hangs in the lobby of the Michigan Department of Attorney General right in front of a portrait of A.G. Schutte. So don't get mad, get justice. Number four, and relatedly, be kind and respectful to your opposing counsel, even when they aren't kind and respectful to you. You can zealously represent your clients without being an asshole. You'll wind up with better settlements, easier gain stipulations, and better stipulations or dispositions on your cases and you'll be better respected by your colleagues and the court by not engaging in deceit, trickery, or acting like an arrogant bully. On the marriage equality case, the lawyers representing the state from the Department of Attorney General consistently denied requests for additional time for filings, objected to our witnesses' qualifications without legitimate grounds, attempted to elicit testimony barred by the court and once made me stand outside the office for 45 minutes waiting to depose a witness during the polar vortex. Now, I'm the attorney general, and all those lawyers work for me. Enough said. Number five, don't be afraid to admit you don't know everything. Ask for help. Almost 15 years after I graduated from law school, I made an appointment to see my old con law professor, Professor Bob Sedler, if anybody has heard of him. Uh, I take it on a case where I knew I was in well over my head. And it turns out uh, I was a completely unremarkable student and Professor Sedler didn't know me from uh, any stranger that he passed on the street, but he agreed to help me nonetheless. So 19 years after learning Marbury v. Madison in his class, Professor Sedler and I walked into the United States Supreme Court together and won one of the biggest cases in history. But none of it would have happened if I didn't have the courage to admit that I desperately needed his help. One day, you'll be the expert and a younger, less experienced attorney will come to you asking for assistance, so pay it forward. Number six, Wayne Law grads, listen up. One day, you're gonna kick the asses of some Harvard-educated lawyers in trial. True story. I don't make the rules, I just know how it works. Number seven. <laughs> it's true. Number seven, whenever leaving employment, leave well and quit graciously. Each of us has had jobs where we felt unappreciated, poorly treated, or not recognized for our hard work and contributions, i.e. the 11 years I spent at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. But as disappointed as I was, as angry as I felt for having been passed over by those I felt were less deserving, I still gave Kim Worthy the most uncomfortable, blubbering goodbye hug on the way out of the office and drafted a very kind letter of resignation thanking her for the experience and wishing her and my old colleagues the very best. 13 years later, when I decided to run for Attorney General, Kim was the very first and arguably most important elected official to endorse me. And would you believe it, my opponent FOIA'd my personnel file from Wayne County, including 
my letter of resignation. Now, imagine if I had aired my many grievances with her and the office on the way out the door. The point is, you'll never know when you will meet people again and in what context. So instead of flipping everyone the bird on the way out or reenacting a scene from Jerry Maguire or Half-Baked or Office Space or some other 90s movie you've never heard of, no matter how bad your experience is, simply thank your employer for anything you may have learned during your time there. Be polite, act gracious and cordial, because that's the way you'll be remembered. Number eight, maintain your integrity and reputation at all costs. As an attorney, there is no more important commodity than your good name. If you lie, if you're dishonest, if you engage in deception, you'll forever lose the ability to stand before a court of law and utter the all-important phrase, your honor, as an officer of the court, I submit the following and have it actually mean something. There is no one case, no one motion, no one hearing, no one trial that will ever be so meaningful that it will be worth losing your good name. It takes years to build up your reputation as a lawyer, but only a single lie in an email, a brief, or in a court proceeding to lose it forever. And those of us in the legal profession have notoriously long memories, and we all know each other. Better to lose a case with integrity and dignity than to win dishonestly, because there will always be another case. Number nine, don't jump from one job to another every time your work becomes difficult or you become frustrated. Fortunately for all of you, it's a great job market out there right now. Uh, and people aren't expected to stay in a position for a full two years anymore just to be eligible for your next employer. But working through difficult cases, tasks, or projects, and learning to overcome obstacles will always make you a better lawyer. You'll never learn to problem solve if you jump from job to job. And one day, when the labor market tightens up again, employers won't hire people who never lasted in a position for more than 11 months. Any of the cases I've ever handled that I was truly proud of, I wanted to desperately withdraw from at one point or another. Three months after spontaneously deciding to run for attorney general, a statewide office representing over 10 million people, which required traveling over 10,000 square miles in two peninsulas, after never even having run for a, a local school board or a city council, I decided it was, in fact, the worst mistake of my life. Raising money, earning endorsements, smiling while you're holding people's babies and then having those babies spit up on you, and then pretending that you're not furious and grossed out that someone's baby puked all over your new suit jacket that you just got dry cleaned. Trying to look uh, empathetic and concerned when prospective voters uh, inform you that the government has implanted a chip in their head. It was all seemingly just not for me at all. I wanted to quit so badly, but my wife gently reminded me, hey, you wanted to do this, no one made you do it, now do the best you can, see this through, if you lose, lose graciously, and then make better life choices. Being successful in your career is no different from being an elite athlete. You'll never win a marathon without getting a lot of blisters on the way but it's oh so worth it just to get the chance to run through the tape at the finish line. So why did Justice Boyle spend our graduation ceremony terrifying me and my fellow graduates with stories of all the lawyers she knew who quit the profession or committed suicide? After nearly 30 years, I think I finally know. Perhaps it was her way of warning us that if you're in this business merely to make the most money, or the prestige you imagine comes along with it, then you are destined to live a life of quiet misery. To the best of your ability, find work that inspires you, that challenges you, that at the end of the day makes you feel as though you've done something to make this world a better place. 
Yes, you have to pay your rent and your mortgage and your car payment and, of course, your student loans. But in the end, when you all look back on your careers, you won't be judged by your hourly rate, your billable hours, or where your name appears in the title of your law firm. You will be judged by how you chose to take advantage of your exemplary legal education and the difference you make in the lives of those around you. I've always done my best to select work that inspires me, and I've never once regretted my decision to spend my life practicing law. Whether you choose a career in public service, working for a nonprofit, or encouraging your law firm to take on more pro bono work, do what you love, and you will love what you do. You walk across the stage today having received one of the finest legal educations in America. Thank you, Dean Birchback. And what you choose to do with it will define whether you one day regret having ever gone to law school or whether you have a career that fills you with pride, satisfaction, fulfillment, and yes, even joy. And if you find yourself on the wrong path, as some guy named Mark Cooper I never heard of has said, life has no remote control. If you don't like the channel you're watching, get up and make a change. So choose wisely, graduates, and congratulations. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney General Nessel, for those um, inspiring remarks and the sound advice. It's our honor to have you here tonight. Thank you. Our commencement ceremony honors three groups of graduating students. Those who received their degrees last December, those who completed their studies in the term just ended, and those who will complete their studies at the end of our summer session. At this time, I ask the graduates to please rise. I ask Provost Cornblue to come forward for the awarding of the degrees. Provost Cornblue, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the law school, I present to you these candidates for the degrees of Master of Laws, Master of Studies in Law, and Juris Doctor, and recommend them to you as worthy guardians of the rule of law who will seek to lead and serve our city, state, and nation as advocates for justice. The authority to convey each of these degrees is vested by the people of the state of Michigan under the Constitution of the state in the Board of Governors of Wayne State University. And by the Board of Governors, it is delegated to the university president on whose behalf I now act. Each of these degrees is granted on the recommendation of the appropriate faculty of the university. By the authority of the Board of Governors and of the President and the recommendation of the law school faculty, I do hereby confer upon you the degree to which the faculty has recommended you. I admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of those degrees. Congratulations, graduates. Degree recipients, please uh, be seated. We've now come to that important moment, the presentation of this year's graduates. While we know that many proud family members would like to take photos, we have a professional photographer here on hand and it's important, please, that no one stand in the aisles so that we can safely get all the graduates across the stage and back to their seats and keep access to the exits clear. 
I will ask Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Rachel Setledge, to present the graduates. Graduates, please remain seated until your respective rows are called. <laughs> Provost Kornbluth, Dean Birschbach, I present to you the members of the class who received the degrees of Juris Doctor, Master of Laws, and Master of Studies in Law in December 2022, May 2023, and August 2023. Christina Atanasoska. Rodney Bellamy. Janine Brunson. <laughs> Junetta Dolores Wynn Adams. <laughs> Diablo Bowman. Amanda Schulte. <laughs> Mariel Christine Mulqueen. <laughs> Kayla Blackburn. Ryan Fisher. <laughs> Muhammad Al Ujeli. <laughs> Jeremy Ellis. Michael Puro. Christian Kodala. Mohammed Kanan. Jasmine Putras. Jared Gajos. Tashara Francis Brown. Marilyn Merkinson. <laughs> Yvonne Curry. <laughs> Emily Hughes. Jennifer Guerra. Rowan Alramahi.
Cassandra K. Davis. Danielle Cheney. <laughs> Mohammed Sawani. <laughs> Jeffrey Osmond. Trevor Lloyd. Adam J. Sohaki. Kelly Tinsky. Jamerica Ramsey. Grace Connolly. Siobhan Gilkey. Brianna McAuliffe. <laughs> Carrie Turner. <laughs> Tia Naji Barak. Rita Tariq Karana. <laughs> Olivia Capizzi. <laughs> Aubrey Smith. <laughs> Dominica Convertina. My apologies, Dominica Convertina. Sarah Britton. Rebecca Hershock. Abarachi Obuka. Is that close? <laughs> Christina Demai. <laughs> Ife Olua Olaleye. Abira Asad. <laughs> Opa Yeme Dawadu. <laughs> Naima Hegler. Ashley Elmore. <laughs> Ethan Hendrickson. <laughs> Montgomery Finch. <laughs> Calder. Bergam. Yeah. 
Emily Barr. Amanda Navarre. Bahar Rose Haste. Alyssa Pfeiffer. Nathan Kelps. Jeffrey Glavin. Daniel Pifeko. Austin Foos. Andrew Nermi. Zachary Thomas. Paige Elshoff. Adam Muratovich. Selena Grimes. <laughs> Margaret Rayom. <laughs> Julie Dilap. <laughs> Matthew Rose. James Parshall the second. Sarah Khan. Bailey Geis. Sajad Abdul Aziz. Austin Church. Hartaj Dillon. Fatima de Krub. Isra Hazimi. Elizabeth Phillips. Ali Bazi. Fawaz Donna Sobe Kalkub Noor El Musawi Kalkub 
Savannah Safawi. Emma Hook. Ian Buchanan. Benjamin Newman. Christopher Sims. Jennifer Davis. Hannah Zaskowitz. Brian Sarnacki. Marcelo Lima Vierja. Kayla Miller. McKenna Ann Berry. Mary Allor. Martina Sopko. Emily Drake. Lindsay Randolph. Colette Birch. Elizabeth Gallagher. Emily Fullen, Evelyn Fullen, Ashley Krenz, Darby Jensen. Rachel Anderson. Tara McClanahan. David Kinzer. Martin Wilder. Elise Victor. <laughs> Megan Norp. <laughs> Andrew Valencourt. Sherilyn Foster Tucker. <laughs> Vatican Kagoga. <laughs> Christopher Winokur.
That's it. And last but not least, Robinette Yearwood. Congratulations again to the Wayne Love Class of 2023. All right. Graduates, you may be seated. Alumni, you may be seated. <laughs> As our ceremony comes to a close, I do want to congratulate our graduates again on this tremendous achievement. I also want to thank the families in the audience and all of you who have been supporters of our graduates. You've all sacrificed something to make this day possible. While our graduates were buried in their books and at the library for hours on end, you were there to support and encourage them. Graduates, please join me in a round of applause for your families and your supporters who are here today. I've been a law professor for about 20 years. I've been in a lot of commencement ceremonies. It's a little bit different as Dean because it gives me a unique perspective on how extraordinary you all are and how extraordinary the law school is. As Dean, I might not have been able to spend as much time with each of you individually as I would have liked, but I've had an especially good perspective, a good viewpoint from which to see how your many individual contributions that we've celebrated here today directly contribute to the greater good and to the reputation and the mission of this great law school and this great university. And I wanna thank you graduates for that. You inspire me, you inspire all of us. And we need you now more than ever. As you step out of here today, I urge you not to forget about the importance of perspective. In many ways, it's what we, it's what we teach at law school, how to see a transaction or an argument or a case or a problem or even a client from multiple angles and points of view, how to turn things around and analyze them from many different directions. You're going to need that skill in the years ahead and not just as lawyers, but also as people. In fact, as the Attorney General suggested in her keynote, those who are most effective as lawyers are almost always those who also are most effective as people. Your qualities as a person, your professionalism, your compassion, your integrity, your grit, your passion, your discipline, your empathy will be just as important to your success and your impact as your academic record, and probably much more so, to be honest. Don't forget that. And don't forget that careers are long and winding and unexpected. Again, something that the Attorney General discussed. Your law degree is the most versatile tool you have. You can do just about anything with it, and you've got what it takes. By definition, from being here today, you have what it takes. As Wayne Law alumni, you're now members of a network more than 12,000 strong. It's filled with attorneys, with senators, with justices, with activists, with business people, with engineers, with at least a couple of opera singers that we know of, with our very own attorney general, and so many more. Leverage that network. Our support doesn't stop when you walk out these doors in a few minutes, you'll always be a member of the, of the Wayne Law community. Congratulations again. 
You earn this moment, and we are all so proud of you. Now on to some final business. I know everyone is eager to celebrate, and they should be. You're all invited for a reception in the grand lobby just outside the theater. For our recessional, those on the stage will proceed out first. They'll then be followed by the graduates. We ask the audience to please remain seated until those on the stage and the graduates have left the theater. Thank you for joining us. This concludes our commencement ceremony. And I'll ask those on the stage and the graduates to please rise for the recessional.